Hello, my friends from around the world. Welcome to another episode of MTD Global. Today, I'm excited to present to you Karen Engineering and my good friend, Rob Karen. We are in Wales, Maine. I haven't been here too often, but I did get to sleep right on the ocean last night, and this place is beautiful. Karen Engineering is a really cool company. Some of you may have heard of it already, some of you might not have, but if you have or haven't, we're gonna discuss a little bit more about some of the technology that Rob has come up with over the years. The first thing we're gonna talk about today is something called the TMAX system. So firstly, Rob, thanks for being here and being a part of MTD. Well, Tony, thank you for coming and joining us here, and uh, we're excited to show you the technology that we have. Oh, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for opening your doors. I know we've done a podcast together. I know we've spent, we've known each other for what, eight, seven, eight years now? Somewhere around there, yeah. Yeah, so it's been a great privilege learning from you. Um, your wisdom goes far beyond my knowledge, so I'm grateful <laughs> every time we get to talk. Uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about this TMAC system. From the beginning, what is it? Well, TMAC, the acronym, stands for Tool Monitoring Adaptive Control. And basically it has two main components. There's the tool monitoring side, which is looking at the health of tools, and there's adaptive control, which will automatically override the feed rate to maintain constant power cutting, which is a huge advantage to reduce cycle time, extend tool life, and it's, it's a big uh, increase in production for customers. So we'll go into detail a little bit about that in a minute because I get so excited when I hear you know, this adaptive cutting and being able to change these, these feed rates tool life, you know, all this stuff I'm excited about, but I want to hear a little bit about the concept, the idea that went into it when you were developing this. Did you just see a need for these machines to adapt while machining based on plunging into a part too hard or maybe not getting the full cycle time that needed to be done? Yeah, you know, it originally started with customers that we saw doing forgings and castings where, uh, you know, complaints were all of a sudden I hit a hard spot in the casting or the forging and it just broke the tool, so I had to reduce all my feed rates. So that's really where the idea originally came from, uh, to be able to say, well, why can't we sense the increase in power and automatically change the feed rate? Um, from those types of applications, it, got, it broad, broadened out to you know, tougher materials like titanium and Inconel, where getting the right feed rate based on the tool degradation is always challenging. Customers always worry about breaking the tool, and on a Twenty or fifty thousand dollar part that can be a real problem. So adaptive control became the solution for that as well. Uh, talking with you about this TMAX system, and we're not talking about Tracy McGrady guys. This <laughs> is the Karen Engineering TMAX system. Something that blew my mind, and this was the first time I heard about it was in live action. The TMAX system will allow the feed rate to automatically adapt based on how it's cutting in the material, correct? That's correct, yes. So unlike um, systems that attempt to make program changes and program optimization where they're changing the feed rate in a part program, that doesn't really compensate for real-time anomalies happening either in the tooling or the material. Uh, with TMAC, we're sensing the power in real time and adjusting the feed rate as if the operator was in front of the control panel changing the feed rate constantly. A person can't do that every 10 milliseconds, obviously, like we can. So it works very well for real-time adjustment to everything that's happening in the cutting process. I'm sure that you have as well, but certainly from my own life, I've been sitting at a desk and I've heard the machine make a funny noise and I've <laughs> jumped up to change that feed rate. Oh man, I dove in too much into the part. This allows the machine to do it on its own without having to have those stressful situations. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned how often it does, you said milliseconds, right? right? That's right. And then also you've mentioned to me before that instead of going by 10%, 10%, 10% in either direction, you're going 1%. That's correct, yes. 1% increment, so it's a much finer, it's 10 times finer than you can do by standing in front of the control. Uh, we also get uh, the ability to go up to 255% of override, so we can actually override that much faster, especially in the air cutting, where you're really trying to reduce some cycle time. Do you find a lot of the people that you work with, the customers, the clients, the friends, that they are overall reducing cycle times now by understanding where I can go faster, where I can go slower, and then overall tool life has been increased as well? Absolutely. The, uh, the cycle time is a big one, and the return on investment of the system is you know, very quick based on cycle time alone, but 
the tool life extension is actually a background benefit. Um, and the third thing that's kind of customers determine after the fact is that they can run more machines with less people because back to your point earlier, I don't need someone standing there all the time when all of a sudden I hear this weird thing happening in the machine. The system does it automatically. So we've seen many customers be able to go from a person running every one or two machines to now maybe running 10 machines because the system is automatically compensating for everything happening in the cutting process. Well, Rob, tell me a little bit more about the sensors that go along with this TMAC system. Well, TMAC has a variety of sensors that it uses to do some of this monitoring technology. Uh, one of the most important ones is our power sensor. Uh, we do power, vibration, strain, but we also monitor coolant flow, coolant pressure, temperature. Um, all these sensors are required to look at not just the cutting health of the tools, but the health of the machine as well. Um, our sensors are scalable, so all of our sensors uh, can scale them, their sensitivity on the fly. So in a machine like this one we're standing in front of as an example, where a 30 horsepower spindle motor, I may be cutting with a four inch shell mill uh, or a very small drill. The sensitivity required to monitor those two different things uh, is vastly different. So by the, having the sensor automatically scale itself, it allows us to monitor all the tooling, all the cutting conditions that go on in the machine. Our vibration sensor is used for many things. One of the key advantages is monitoring the spindle bearings of a machine. We can also look at the health of the tool rotating in the spindle. So there's a lot of things that happen, <clears throat> a lot of situations happen in manufacturing where it's just anomalies that get picked up and, and need to be uh, measured and, and triggered as an alarm for a user. So um, <clears throat> coolant flow is another big one. The ability to look at how much coolant flow you know, pumps get clogged, filters get clogged, all of a sudden you're not delivering enough coolant flow. It's important. Your tool life's going to degrade. All kinds of things are going to happen. Uh, so coolant flow is important as well. So the ability to monitor all these things that are not necessarily well maintained on machines on a day-to-day -day basis is incredibly important and all part of the system. The TMX system <clears throat> calculates coolant flow, heat, vibration, all of these analytics, what am I leaving out? Uh, we can do coolant pressure. Um, we can also measure the strain of certain things, uh, things like uh, the, the vice clamping force. So there's, there's a lot of things that can be measured. Um, just the vibration of the axis slides, is it vibrating too much? Uh, so there's a lot of key things, key indicators that show that not just the tooling's not as healthy, but the machine's not as healthy as well. That's incredible. It really is incredible. Like, I've had to replace so many machines personally because of little things. Like you mentioned, you know, the slide of the bearings, you mentioned the vibration of the main spindle itself. Obviously, when I look at the interface of whatever CNC I'm running, I have a load meter, right? right. It's obviously going to show me I'm putting on too much load or not enough load, but I don't know if it's not enough load because we're at zero, you know, all these kind of things. I easily remember my coolant never being changed and starting to stink <laughs> before I made a change. So having these calculations done for me on a regular basis, because maybe yep. I have a million other things going on, that makes so much sense sure. to me. What a great system to have for any machine. Yeah, absolutely. And as you get into, you know, robotics and automation, and now nobody's standing there watching the machine's health. All these things can be degrading and no one knows it's happening. So um, things like the spindle bearing is bearing uh, monitoring is hugely important because Spindle bearings degrade over time. And yes, a maintenance department can come around and evaluate once in a while, but if they're not doing it or, or they're just not getting to each machine, all of a sudden you come in one day and the spindle seized up, you know, it's not working anymore. So uh, the ability to predict and know ahead of time that these things are happening uh, gives you a lot more opportunity to keep a plan up and running. Yeah, this is quality preventive maintenance. <clears throat> yes. Well, I think the guys who are working on the machines would like this as well because Absolutely. they get a heads yeah. up ahead of right. time. Because right. of, how much money do we lose when that spindle's broken, That's right? right? So yeah. having this type of foresight into sure. whatever we're working on is absolutely brilliant, Rob. And, and now they can look at a report in their office rather than trying to get out onto every machine and, and work with production to say, can you stop the machine for an hour so I can do some evaluation? They don't need to do any of that. It just happens automatically. They just look for a report, say, what, what's the health of every machine in the shop? Yeah, you nailed it. I'm not sure how many shops out there still, but certainly I remember 
having a set time where a maintenance guy would come around and say, okay, this day, this machine is down, you yep. cannot run it, or at least for a couple of hours, whatever it may, might be, because we need to check and see what the health of the machine exactly. is, instead of it breaking. Right, and that can't, that can't exist anymore, because first of all, there's not enough maintenance people to even do all the machines, you know, that, that's getting more problematic, but just getting the live data, and the other thing is, when you're only measuring a machine every few months, you don't know all the history of what it took all along. One of the key indicators can be all of a sudden there was a machine impact, you know, a potential crash on a machine. Well, if you're measuring the bearings every week, you know what they looked like last week and you know what they look like after the crash. Was there a major degradation there? So by having more uh, consistent data measuring, you're going to have a much better view of what's going on with the machine tool. Yeah, it makes complete sense to me. And how long has this technology been around? Uh, the bearing analysis has been in our products for about seven years, roughly now. So um, it's it's a very viable solution. I feel like every machine should have it. Honestly. Absolutely, I'm not I'm not just pulling yeah. your chair. It's not just because I'm on camera, guys. Yeah. This sounds amazing. I, I wish I, I would have had one. We've been saying that for a while. So, well, if there's anything we've learned over the last few years. The ability to adapt and be flexible in machining environments has become, it's always been important, but maybe it's just had a spotlight shine on it now. So the ability to have, Absolutely. instead of one person per one machine, having one person per five machines or 10 machines or whatever it might be, now we're adding automation into this as well with these robots. It's really, what you're doing is really forward thinking in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. And then the, the availability of people that can listen to a tool and go make an adjustment is, is getting less and less. So the, the, having a system that can automatically do that is, is gonna be absolutely essential as we move into the future of manufacturing. So a couple of things I just wanna make clear to the audience because these were questions that I had as well and to you it's common sense, but to me, I was, you know, I needed to know the answer. <laughs> right. um, we are working on, it changes automatically feed rates, but we're not doing depth of cut, the nope. RPM, we're working on feed rates. This is also available for any machine and it has nothing to do with the programming software itself. It adapts completely to the machine as the feed rate override like you discussed, that's, correct? That's correct. So it's 100% it's just taking over the feed rate of the machine itself and adapting to that feed rate. So we're not modifying the part program. If you look at the part program, after every part, it's the same exact part program. Nothing has changed. We're simply adapting in real time. And how easy is this to put onto a machine? It's pretty straightforward. Um, we put a power sensor in line with the spindle motor. That gives us our scalable power sensing capability. And then we attach the uh, connection to override the feed rate. So it's a fairly straightforward process. Um, setting up from the customer side is very easy. They just establish a baseline power. The system takes over from there. I'm sure everyone watching around the world wants to see what this software can do. Would you mind explaining how this software works to our global audience? Absolutely. Um, so we've uh, basically, we've got a cut demonstration cut here that's going to uh, basically present some cutting anomalies so that we can in inject the adaptive control capability. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a cut and what we're going to see on the screen is we actually are showing two things here. This will be the vibration of the tool. Uh, this screen here is going to show the power and the feed rate adjustment simultaneously. So I'm actually going to run two times just to be able to show this. Then I'm going to expand the screen so we can really dive into the adaptive control itself. So we're going to see, first of all, down on this screen here, you're seeing the vibration of the tool as it's cutting. This screen is showing the green line, which is the target power. The purple line is the feed rate being adjusted. And the white is the measured power. So as the measured power gets above or near the green line, the feed rate is constantly being adjusted. It's measuring everything in real time and making those adjustments as fast as it can to maintain a constant power cut. All this data is saved and we can historically view it later on. We're also tracking the original time of the cut, which was when the cut was learned at 100%, and we can constantly tell any user how much cycle time they saved on every single cut. So now I'm gonna run one more time, and this time we're gonna really expand out the screen where we're just going to show power. So now you're really going to see it. If you watch, the power, as you can see, is the white line. The feed rate override, in this case, is 200% when it's not cutting enough power. As the power increases to the target, the system will automatically maintain that constant power by modifying the feed rate. 
We're actually doing two cuts here, which is why you see two different screens. So you can see as the feed rate drops off, as excuse me, the power drops off, the feed rate is increased because we can cut much faster. So this is where we're getting our cycle time reduction. However, as the tool approaches the higher power levels and starts getting into that target power, the feed rate is automatically reduced. It's constantly doing this and adapting. It's impossible for a human being to adjust to this. Um, also, if you think about things like castings and forgings and other materials that have changing conditions, you can't programmatically change the feed rate for all those conditions because they're not in the same place every single part that gets to the machine. So the only real way to do it is with true adaptive control. We can also look at the uh, historical data. So every cut is saved. We can look at everything that's happened in the cut. We can go in and look at any single area in here and see what's going on as well. Um, we can evaluate those conditions. And we also can look at, for any anomaly, what was the axis position when that anomaly occurred? So you have a huge amount of data advantages. We have the x-axis position at anywhere I click on the cursor. If I want to know where this valley is right here, it's telling me exactly an XYZ coordinates. So it's, it's not just controlling in real time. It's a complete analysis tool to see how well you did and what potential problems you may have in the material that you're cutting. So if someone's curious about this <clears throat> TMEX system, where can they find you? What are your social medias? What's your website? How can they look you up to learn more about your product? Well, they certainly can go on KarenENG.com. That's where our website is. We have links to uh, our integration network and all of our products are on that website. Um, we're on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. <clears throat> our marketing manager is here as well. So. Uh, <laughs> She's actually the one who puts all that content up there, so it's nice to have that. Well, Rob, I really appreciate you educating me a bit more about this TMAX system. It's impressive. It's something I wish I had while I was doing more machining and less talking. Now I do more <laughs> talking than machining. But I appreciate you sharing that with me, the websites, letting everyone know where they can find it, and being a part of MTD. Well, thank you. Thank you.